G'day everyone, this is Ozzy Okdok, and thank you for visiting my channel, What's Okdok? I'm a doctor from Australia, and I specialize in the field known as occupational medicine. Today, we'll be discussing one of the fundamental concepts in occupational medicine, the idea of hazard and risk. Every day, we are faced with a number of dangers as we go about our daily lives. Whether that be while you're attempting to cross a busy street, when you attempt to lift that heavy box at work, or even while you're at home preparing dinner in the kitchen. Each of these situations, while it might seem mundane, have inherent dangers which could cause potential harm to not only yourself and others. For the first example, the main danger is the threat of incoming traffic, but there are also other potential dangers such as uneven road surfaces and exposure to the outdoor environment. For the second example, lifting a heavy box of unknown weight, it could also depend on whether you're lifting that box up above your head or if the contents aren't properly sealed in the package. In the third example, the kitchen knife is the closest danger, but there can also be other dangers in the kitchen. For example, fire from the stove, chemicals, or even issues with food sanitation. All these dangers that I've described in the previous examples are what is known as hazards. Hazards are defined as anything or any situation with the potential to cause injury or harm. In occupational medicine, as a worker, depending on your workplace environment, you may be in contact with a number of potential hazards. These can be broadly categorized into physical, biological, chemical, ergonomic, psychosocial. Each of these categories I'll make a separate future video but to give brief explanations with some examples. Physical are defined as factors in the environment that can cause harm to the body without contact resulting from a release of energy. Some examples include radiation, noise, heat and vibration. Biological are defined as organic substances that can pose a threat to the health of humans and other living organisms. This could range from bacteria to biological toxins. Chemical, related to the harmful effects to health as a result of exposure to chemical substances. This could be breathed in, consumed orally, or come into contact with skin. Ergonomics, is a type of hazard related to the work which affect the musculoskeletal system, specifically relating to manual handling, repetitive movements, body positioning, and workstation setup. Psychosocial are factors which affect the mental and personal well-being of workers. This can include workplace culture, stress, and drugs and alcohol. Our brains can either consciously or subconsciously make a judgment on these hazards and evaluate what is the most appropriate action to take. This process is the determination of the risk of a hazard. While a hazard is something that has the potential to harm you, the risk is the evaluation of the likelihood that that hazard causing you harm and the consequence if it does so. Therefore, imagine likelihood as the probability of it occurring and consequence as the impact of the event occurring. Imagine you're on a holiday at the beach and you're looking to do some swimming. Off in the distance, you see a hungry great white shark swimming around looking for a tasty meal. Now the shark is an obvious hazard with the potential to bite your arm off or worse. In your mind, you weigh up the risk of going into the water. If you decide to enter the water in your budgie smugglers, the likelihood of encountering the shark while you're swimming is high, and the consequence of being attacked and the impact on your health is high. You would therefore evaluate the risk to be high. If however you decide to wear a chainmail suit, then the likelihood of encountering the shark is still high, but the consequence would be reduced as the suit would offer some degree of protection against shark bites. So the assessed risk would be medium. If, however, you decide to swim in a section of beach where a physical barrier has been erected that keeps sharks out, then the likelihood of encountering a shark is low, although the consequence is still high. You could therefore conclude that the risk is low. Here we have touched on briefly the concept of managing risk which involves putting certain measures in place to reduce the risk of exposure to a hazard. 
In occupational medicine, this assessment involves both the worker and the workplace. For the worker, the hazards we try to identify are the pre-existing medical conditions that would lead to an increased risk of developing a medical condition or work-related injury. Similarly, the workplace environment needs to be assessed for all potential hazards and the risk of them causing harm to the worker. Both of these assessments are then combined to determine whether someone is fit to work in their role. We will expand on both the types of hazards and how they manage in more detail in subsequent videos, but I hope that I was able to provide a good overview on the concept of risk versus hazard. Thank you for watching this video. I hope that I provided you with some valuable information in the area of occupational medicine. I value any feedback, therefore please feel free to leave a comment on any of my videos, as well as a like if you enjoyed it. If you find my content of value, please subscribe and share them with your family and colleagues. Have a good day.